because you're going to need to use your head, which you're not going to do. You need it because this won't stay up, so you've got to go like this. Just saying, this seems like a very poor design. I didn't design it. Oh, I know. Whoever what did, did you put in there? The, the, your washer. Well, the washer should, go, should have gone on the thing. Well, you didn't tell me oh, that. It's self explanatory. Darling, you only had one washer. How was I supposed to know the one washer was meant to go on when you missing it? Because it's the one? cutting tool. Ah, so if you can just roll this, please. Okay. And G'day everyone, welcome back to Tom's Rook Farm. Today we start outloading. We are going to uh, finish off the wheat. Now we're not entirely sure how much we've got. We think about 50 to 65 ton. Now uh, Brian takes 79 ton, but that won't fit in just two trailers. So normally when we do a split load, we'll do two trailers or one trailer, and then you, you, know, you can do the rest with barley, take it to, to Cascade, but we think there's too much and there's going to be, we're going to have to fill every single trailer which is a bit of a pain for Brian because it means he's got to take basically an empty truck down to CBH but it's what we've got to do then he'll be coming back and we'll get the barley and then we'll start yeah, fully on outloading from there um, now I'll get it out at the start of the video because at, uh, at the end of the day and the end of the videos I get a bit tongue tied and tired but if you guys are enjoying these videos uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, and don't forget to like them and share them if you're enjoying it. Uh, send it to someone who you think might enjoy. Now, also, uh, my name is John, J-H, not Tom. I know it's a bit confusing with uh, Tom's Brook Farm, but uh, yeah, I see a lot of comments saying, hi, Tom, and all this, Tom, it's John, or J-H. So I just thought I'd get that out of the way straight up. Now, a few people have noticed uh, the bins, and why do, we, why do we call the bins their names? And then why are we blaming Canada? I mean, we like Canada. Canada is a cool country, but uh, why have we got Blame Canada up there? Well, <laughs> back when uh, I think I was probably about 14 or 15, uh, that when we were all together with uh, Tom and George, uh, so we, we used to all be together, so we were about eight and a half or 9,000 hectares, which Dad used to run. Now, we had, back in the day, we had four headers, two chasers, and uh, we used to get contractors in. So we had, uh, the contractors would come in with, uh, they had two cats and they had a chaser bin. Now, uh, Chelsea, because you can see it says by Chelsea with a love heart up there. She was the chaser bin driver. And uh, on this particular day, as you can see, she got very, very close to the bin and sliced it open like a can opener. Grain was coming out everywhere. So obviously dad, you know, they patched it up. And it was right about the time where South Park came out with their song, uh, Blame Canada. And obviously us as kids, we were, you know, watching South Park and we'd play that song or whatever. So dad thought it'd be funny to uh, write Blame Canada up there. And then uh, that's when Chelsea saw it. And then she decided that she would, uh, you know, at least write who it was from. So uh, that's, this, that's, that's the explanation for Blame Canada. Now, uh, why is it PS4 or VB4 or 860? So PS is Parker Silo. They were the company who built the, uh, these fill bins. So they built these 40 tonners and they also built the 860. Now we call the 860 862 because we had two of them. Uh, Tom has the, uh, has the 861, we've got 862. We've got PS1 to PS4. They've got PS5 to PS8. And then we are VB3 and VB4, they are VB1 and VB2. Now VB, the VBs are what um, Dad and his brothers and Dad built back in the day. Uh, so these are all home built um, fill bins. Very heavy, very, very heavy. I do not like them. They're just horrible for lifting, horrible for towing. Um, great for filling. Chase bins love them. But uh, VB stands for very big. Dad wanted to call it FB, because back in the day they had small fill bins, and these were uh, these were really big fill bins. I'll let I'll let you figure out what FB stands for.
Brian is loaded and on his way back to Cascade. <clears throat> so because I've already got the uh, the barley all ready to go, I can't can't do anything. So what I'm going to do is just start carting field bins up to the uh, the shed there, so that they're all ready to you know, get, get cleaned and then put away. And what I might do is uh, just to speed up my process when it comes to um, when we move paddock. I've got one more bag to go down there. So obviously when uh, when that bag gets empty, um, I'm gonna need to shift. But there'll still be grain in the 100 tonner. And what that means is that uh, I won't be able to start debagging the other bag until that's empty with brine, but then that would be, you know, there could only be like four tonne left in the bin. Then I get that bin up there, I'm gonna start debagging. It'd just be an absolute headache. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move that up and then get that up, set down, so that when I move up, I can, I've got a bin to go straight into. And then we'll just use the 860 when we're up there and maybe I'll drag the 100 tonner up as well so it's up there and make it a bit quicker and I can debag more, but that's the plan. I'm uh, just lowering the auger, the 13 inch auger now, just getting this into transport mode. And now I'm gonna take the 860 up and park that up at the, uh, the next site. It's not gonna be until tomorrow that we'll be moving up there. I've already emptied one bag, well, sorry. I'm on, on the first bag at the moment and uh, we're gonna be... We'll finish that bag by, uh, you know, lunchtime. So I'll be on to the next bag after that. So just trying to get myself prepared just with it being by myself, it just makes it a bit easier if I'm thinking ahead and getting it all prepared and in time. So I'll just get this up there, and then like I was just trying to get my point across, we're not gonna be using the 860 or this, you know, until tomorrow, but if I can get it all up there now, I don't need to be rushed or anything tomorrow, so it just makes life a bit easier. Eight sixty and the auger are all ready to roll. Two bags down there. The first bag we'll be hooking onto is for seed. I think I'm going to get about seventy to seventy-five ton of that, and that'll be going up to the shed there with Brian. Uh, so, you know, we'll uh, put that into silo two and silo three. I'll all be going into here, and then he'll just, you know, go from here with that. Uh, so yeah, two bags there, and then there's the one hundred meter bag that's down on the road there on the bitumen. Uh, we got that one to do. We will either use a fill bin or we can just go straight out of the debagger. Uh, we've done that before. We actually did it last year with Brian. It's good ground there. It's solid ground. Um, but yeah, we'll just see what happens when it comes time. I probably will take a fill bin up there in any way, anyway and use a uh, fill bin just because it's going to be quicker and easier. But yeah, we'll just uh, make that plan when we get to it. And uh, got that all settled down just in time. Brian's on his way back from CBH. So 65 tonne is what we had left of wheat. Um, so yeah, no, it was, a, it was a decent load, you know. It wasn't a full load, obviously, but it was a decent load. So I'm going to head down to uh, the barley, and uh, we'll wait for Brian. We'll uh, load him, and then we need to get straight into debagging, because he's going to be quick, and I need to, yeah, keep, keep uh, tons up to him. And now starts uh, the barley outloading. So I might have already mentioned it, but uh, I think we've got around about 900 ton that we've got to outload uh, you know, out of the five bags. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we get. Um, and then now this is going to be the true test of if I can keep up to Brian or not. He uh, he'll leave, and then I'll start debagging. Obviously, I've got got the uh, the Ute there all ready to roll with a full chase wind, so I can just straight away go. Um, I might need to start change a bag on this uh, on this load, but um, we're all going to find this out together. 
Well, Brian's uh, loaded enough, so I'm uh, getting this thing unloaded and then straight away over to the bag. But as you can see, I'm at the, uh, I'm towards the end of the bag. Brian, <coughs> Brian pretty much drained this. There's just the cone left. So I need to get this full again to give him a load for, <laughs> for next load. I think he's gonna be stopped already on his next load because I'm gonna be switching bags, but we'll just see how we go. Uh, it's just what we have to deal with. When you've got multiple people or two chasers, obviously there's no issue because when you've got two chasers, you've all, you're always unloading the bag. Whereas with one, you know, you just unload it for the one, it's going to go unload, come back. So, uh, yeah, anyway, we'll, um, we shall see how, uh, how I go. Right, so I've got the uh, fuel bin basically full. Um, I just got the notification that Brian's departing. And where's the best way? Uh, you can see I've still got a little bit of the bag left. Uh, so I was wrong. I thought I was gonna finish that bag, but I didn't. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go over and fill the chase bin up again. And then that will be damn near finishing the bag. Uh, and then uh, it'll be once Brian's gone, I reckon. And you know, come and gone, got the grain, I'll unload this, and then I'll have to uh, hook onto that new bag. So, uh, oh, I'm gonna spill this, hang on. Oh, that's very full. Let me just pull forward. I'm trying to be my auger. Ah, uh, so yeah, that's the plan anyway. That's one very full fill bin. Got a tiny bit left on board, but not much. Let's see if I can show you that fill bin in a sec when I pull around. You can see how full it is. So yeah, nice and full. So I'm gonna, uh, I've actually just remembered that I need that telly handler down here because my, my, my deep bagger doesn't do a very good job at emptying the bag. It does, I do end up with a bit of a pile in there. I'm hoping that what I've done is I've left enough space for uh, me to get the debagger in without having to shovel that because that's going to ruin everything. Um, it's going to be tight. Might need to give Rihanna a call and see if she can help me. So what we're doing because I'm. Um, just staying in front of Brian uh, now with the, and that's with a full bag hooked up. Uh, I'm loading into Brian now with this chaser, and then I'm gonna shoot over, start debagging again. I'm gonna finish that bag and then hook onto the next bag, and that just try and gets me to stay in front of him. If I was to fill him and then, yeah, wait, I, uh, he'd be waiting when we got back. So um, I gave Rihanna a call, she's gonna come down and give me a hand just to uh, hook onto that bag so we can do it nice and quick. And uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully all goes well and we have a smooth transition and Brian uh, yeah, isn't held up when he gets back here. It's just uh, seamless. Right, we're getting to the end of the bag, as you can see. So now I'm just gonna be getting out and making sure I'm not ripping the bag. What I'm gonna watch for is the blade doesn't always cut and then the, the auger on the side here can um, can come through the bag and that causes a whole lot of damage if you're not careful because the bag wraps up into the auger oh. and all this floaty barley dust going around it is the itchiest stuff you'll ever come across So 
So basically I just try and get it all the way to the edges up as close as I can without ripping anything. And then the rest I've got a shovel. I'm gonna have to move that tractor forward. is get this off the bag, off the... So you do the roller the other way, wait till it's free, roll all the way to the edge, or to the end, and then you can um, get a bag off. There we go. If you want to just stand back while I check for snakes. That's going to be my first question. No snakes, just lots of yucky looking bugs. Gross. Alright, you just pull that all the way out that way. Jesus. <laughs> Minding the batteries, darling. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'll reverse back. And if you can just sort of lift up and just scoot fo forward with me. Is that good? Take that. Dink, so. Yeah. So those are your three nuts. Now what you do is uh, we just make sure we're even. Oh, it stinks. All right, now we want to pull about that much over the top. Grab your washer, yeah. find your bolt wherever it is, and then just break the uh, the bag over it. All right, then grab the, the next layer and do the exact same. And then what, put these on? Then grab that. That goes over there, over all your bolts. And then just put all your, uh, your nuts on. How come there's three nuts and four feet? Because we're missing one. So if you come around this side, please, Dylan. What? Come around this side, please. So the next job, I'll be in there. I've got to lower it down, and I've got to come back. So if you can stand here, and as I come back, be very careful of your fingers, because if you go all the way around here, you're going to jam it. So the best way to do it is just to go like this, and you just roll back as I come, because it's going to wrap the bag up. You're doing good. And you can let go now. That's going to spin on that. Um, right. Can you now hop in there and I'll just get you to drive that for the first load? <laughs> Adjusting the seat. <laughs> uh, can you come forward underneath the auger, please?
So having a uh, extra person makes it so much easier when you're um, hooking onto a new bag or even just debagging with the tractor because I was able to get Rhiannon to go forward, 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 fill the chaser up a lot more. But I thought I'd show you what we end up with. So this is uh, the pile of grain that I end up with. Now, sometimes it's a lot better than that. Sometimes it's a lot worse. Uh, I know that some people are going to comment that their baggers don't do it. Ours does. Uh, the Rakaigas, uh, they're very good. They um, they uh, get like, you know, a couple wheelbarrow loads. Uh, you know, that there is probably two uh, telehandler loads. Uh, so it's not too bad, just a bit of shoveling. It's all right when you're, uh, when you've got a mul multiple people here and there's, um, yeah, multiple people shoveling. But um, when it's just yourself, not ideal, but that's all right. We will persevere. We shall go and start unloading this and then uh, keep on uh, debagging this bag, get it ready for Brian. Now that I am uh, probably ahead of, ahead of Brian now, um, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I should be ahead of Brian. Um, what I might do is if I do have time at the end of uh, getting this silo full, I will see if I can get Rhiannon to drop into the shed and I can grab Manny and bring Manny down here and shovel these bags. Because obviously I'm going to need to shovel these bags before we leave here. We can't leave the grain there, just, yeah, you can't. So, um, yeah, that might be, uh, might be on the cards, but this grain here is nice and dry. This is 9.8%, so absolutely crispy dry grain. This load here will get this fill bin pretty much full. Uh, you can see the bag over there. I've only taken uh, two, two full loads out of there. Brian's already on his way back, so he's definitely outrunning me. Um, when he gets back here, I'll be over there uh, debagging into the, uh, the chaser here. And we'll probably do the exact same. I'll fill his A trailer with this chaser, and then I'll just keep on going, and he'll just fill himself out of the tractor here. Uh, it's the only way that I'm gonna be able to keep up with him, so yeah. But uh, yeah, at least I am keeping up with him. I was a bit worried that he's always gonna be sitting here waiting, but yeah, that'll only happen when it comes to having to shift paddock. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Since our last clip, Brian's actually been and come back and we've loaded him again. And uh, we were just trying to sort out a plan of what we do. That's what I got left, that bag there. We don't, it's so hard to tell in bags how many ton you got. You know, it all relies on how much pressure you put in the bag. Um, you know, to how many tons is in a bag and all this. So there's probably not quite a load there, but there also could be a load there, if that makes sense. Like it's, it's borderline. Uh, so anyway, he's gonna go to town or go find another farm to go get some grain off. I'm gonna debag the rest of this, chuck it in there, and then uh, I need to go and get the telehandler, bring that down, because I need to shovel the bottom, the back of the both of these, uh, these um, bags. I then need to get this and the bagger up, the debagger up there to where the 860 is, so then I can start on the seat up there. And also need to get an auger from uh, Rasheen to, um, the shed for, for seed but yeah so it's uh it's gonna be a busy afternoon for me okay i've uh, finished the bag and uh looking at what i've got over in that field bin i've got more than i have brian there's gonna be you know anywhere from three to five ton left over i guess so uh anyway he's going to town we'll sort it out tomorrow Four o'clock now, so I've got to uh, start shuffling some things around. What I gotta do, take my ute, grab Bill, drop my ute at the 860. Make sure you're gonna drive around my ute, because this wind's gonna do that. I'm gonna blow that bag over my ute, put them on that. Uh, so I'm gonna, gonna go up, get the uh, Bill, drop my ute where the 860 is, I then got to go get the Hyundai or Steve and then drop that there as well. 
I then need to get a telehandler, bring the telehandler down here. And then I need to shovel all this grain. And uh, then I can load that into the chaser, load that into the fill bin. I'm going to have to move my anchors out. And then what I can do after that is take my, uh, I can take the uh, debagger up to, um, up to the, uh, where the 860 is, and then uh, use the Steve or the Hyundai to get back down, and then I can bring the uh, chaser up to there, and then that means that I can, um, I can then start debagging, and then I can eventually, you know, use my ute to go and do whatever I need to do, move the auger or save that for tomorrow morning or whatever. Right, oh, I forgot to have more moved. I forgot I had the Triton because obviously uh, the guys are using just Henry's car to get down to um, down to help the boys out. So I had that to use to move around. Now I've got to, I've got to put the bucket onto this because I've uh, currently just got the, um, the forks on. So, bucket on, and then I gotta remember a shovel. <laughs> It'd be, oh god, I'd be so annoyed if I got down there and I didn't have a shovel because I got no heat down there now. Um, yeah. Bucket, shovel, head down, do some shoveling. Back shift all the gear up. Aside from the fact that the sun is shining, you guys can't see that well. Now there's one very full uh, fill bin. There's going to be an, an annoying amount left over um, once Brian's uh, loaded in the morning. I reckon there'll be probably about three to four ton left on, but that's what happens. Anyway, I've uh, obviously shoveled. This is empty, so I'm going to get this up there. Then I'll come back down. I'll be getting that and uh, take that up there. Get hooked onto a bag and uh, maybe start debagging tonight, I'm not sure. It's currently uh, 20 to 6 at the moment, so it's gonna be quite late by the time we get everything up there and set up, but yeah, we'll see how we go.
one. That's a, uh, a day of debagging. Um, quite full on, quite stressful when it's by yourself, but that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go and unload this into the 860 and then going to keep on going just so I'm a bit further ahead for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, uh, haven't really heard much from the guys down there. They've uh, finished the canola and into the wheat. I know that much. Um, I think one of them, I think George was planning to, George, my cousin George, not Summers, was planning to uh, get the drone up at some point with all four headers. So uh, hopefully they do that and then I'll put that footage up for uh, in the video tomorrow if they do. But uh, yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Go have a listen to the Glass Cage podcast. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.